very good evening. Welcome to Building to Last program. Um, before we start, let me make a prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you even this evening, even as we minister to the world. Father, we pray even because of our guest that we have here today, even as he speaks, may the experiences of his life build us and make us today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. I want to appreciate our Father, the prophet of the house, for this chance and opportunity, even that he has allowed us to air this program. Uh, and with me is the director, St. Christopher School, uh, Matthew, welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, Thank if we you, may Madam. begin. Who is Bernard Matthew? Um, I think I'm many things. Yeah. But I would like to describe myself as a humble servant of the Almighty God. Wow. Uh, um, I was born 60 years ago <laughs> in yeah. a humble family. Yeah. My parents hailed from Nyeri, but mm. I was born in Makueni mm. because that is where my father was working. Mm. Um, my father was a cook in a uh, Muzungu farm mm. in Makueni, and uh, uh, that's where I was born. Yeah. My mother was a housewife. Yeah. Uh, so we were born in a family of uh, seven children. Yeah. Uh, and. Uh, uh, our mother died when I was seven years old. And therefore, uh, for me, uh, I was second last born. Yeah. And therefore, we were left when we were very young. Uh, and at that time, yeah. I had joined primary school mm. in 1968 in Standard One. Wow. But then she died in August 1968. So I had done term one and two. After she passed on, I yeah. was withdrawn from school to stay with my younger brother who followed me because my father was working a distant away from our house. Yeah. And I had to join primary school three years later. What? Yes. You, you waited for three years to I join? I waited for three years to go back to school. How, how old was your small brother? That three you years. Yeah. He was actually three years old. When so you our, took our care of him for died. three years? Yes. Because my other siblings yeah. were much older. Yeah. Uh, reason being, mm. uh, during my mother, my father was actually in the Mau Mau movement. Uh -uh. And uh, 1952, when mm. the, 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 the declaration of the state of emergency, mm. my father was separated from my mom. Oh. And he was taken to detention. Yeah. Uh, he, only, he was only released about uh, nine years later. Mm -hmm. uh, so my older uh, siblings yeah. have a gap, big gap between myself yeah, and, the... and my younger brother. Okay. Uh, so I went to school in a, a school that was nine kilometers away. So one way we would <laughs> walk with, uh, there is the brother that I follow. Yeah. We went to school together because I grew faster. I was big. <laughs> uh, and, <laughs> and therefore, we went to school the same year yeah. in Standard One, 1968. Yeah. But when I was withdrawn, then he continued. Okay. Uh, we used to walk nine kilometers one way and then back. So 18 kilometers per day. And you know, in Makueni, in the Okambani area, it, some, uh, most of the year it was very hot. Yeah. You can imagine the distance that we were taking. However, well, um, uh, we managed. And I went to school until Saturday 4, when my father then stopped working there and moved back to our home in Tetunyeri. Okay. And so I continued for Saturday 5, 6, and 7 in another school, Kirit Primary in uh, Tetu. Okay. After which I was admitted at Alliance High School in Kikuyu. Wow. So. I, uh, from there, the, the, one of my sisters is married near Alliance High School in Kikuyu. <laughs> and sometimes we, uh, for the six years that I was in Alliance High School, some of the holidays I would stay in Kikuyu. Mm. And uh, today there are people who actually think I come from there yeah. because of the period of time I stayed there. Yeah. Because after Alliance High School, I went from, from one to from six. Mm. Then I joined Kenyatta University. 
And after my degree, Bachelor of Education degree, mm. I went back to teach at Alliance High School. Wow. Uh, later on, along the way, I did a master's degree, Master of Business Administration, MBA. Yeah. And then I worked in Alliance High School mm. for 14 years. Yeah. And four of those years, I was the deputy principal. Uh, then I was transferred yeah. from Alliance High School and promoted and taken to Kakamega yeah. County as the principal of Musingo High School. Yeah. And then when I was in Musingo High School, I worked for three years and then I resigned from Teacher Service Commission yeah. and went into the business world. world. <laughs> and you stepped outside? I stepped outside. Oh, oh, um, what triggered this move? All along, well, even when I was working at Alliance High School, yeah. and incidentally from the beginning when I, I got my appointment letter, those days yeah. we were given our appointment letters at the university. Yeah. When we did the final examination, even mm. before graduation, we were given appointment letters and posted to schools. Ah. It's not like today, <laughs> where they have to, to go doing interviews and yeah. waiting for a long time. So I remember telling a friend, uh, although I got this job, I would want to do my own business in a very short time. I said that. In <laughs> I didn't know really, but, but in yeah, my mind I felt, felt I like yeah. independence. Yeah, 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 yeah. And therefore I felt I needed, I didn't want to work for a long time. I yeah, wanted to go yeah, into yeah. business. Yeah. And when I was in Alliance High School, yeah. I started two businesses that worked very well. <laughs> no wonder the, the, the zeal, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the businesses, I used to have a holiday school. Wow. Uh, every holiday, I would gather children in Nairobi. Yeah. Yeah. There was a school on Laltema Road yeah. called Ravo Secondary School. Yeah. I would lease it or hire it for the holidays. And I would gather, by the time uh, I was... Uh, Stopping that business, I was gathering over 800 children per holiday. Per holiday, that's yes. a school. <laughs> and I would engage. Ah, yeah. Oh, other teachers. I would engage other teachers. Of course, I wouldn't teach alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we concentrated on four subjects. Uh -huh. Mathematics, yeah. uh, physics, chemistry, and biology. Those oh, were the most yeah. popular. Yeah. One or two children would want to do others, but that's what we concentrated on. Yeah. And, and then... And you discovered there's money. I discovered there was money. <laughs> <laughs> I w yes, yeah. Yeah, because I would make good money <laughs> yeah. every holiday. And this somehow um, made me, I was fairly comfortable and committed to my work. Yeah. I would tell you today that mm. in Alliance High School for all the years I worked, I used to teach biology. Yeah. My mean score was always the best. That one I can tell you for sure, and yeah. the records are there. Yeah, yes. Uh, I made sure that I did my work so well, duties and everything else. Mm. I was doing it so well. It, the holiday school never interfered with my work. Yeah. But at the same time, I also began another business. Yes. The, I was housed in the school. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the house where uh, my, my house was on about almost an acre yeah. a space. Uh -huh. So I was able to construct uh, chicken houses. And I started the business of broiler chicken. Yeah. I would supply it to all sorts of places, but I was lucky I got uh, tender to supply the University of Nairobi. The so chicken. at some point, I was the sole supplier of broiler chickens in the whole of University of Nairobi. Ah, and you and never resigned. <laughs> <laughs> and the good thing yeah. uh, is that uh, many people did not want to take that tender. Reason being, yeah. when you supply, any time you supply, you would get your check about six months later. Ah. So not many people are ready to wait for to, six yeah. months to yeah. get back their money. Yeah. So I came up with a strategy. Mm -hmm. All the money I would make from elsewhere, yeah. I would, I would um, bank it and I accumulated very large capital. Yeah. Capital that would enable me to survive even when my money is held. I would wait for the six months and I'll finally get my check. Wow. But yeah. I had enough money to run. To run. I had uh, almost 6,000 chickens at different ages. There are those that were at the brooder. Yeah. Those that are two weeks old. Yeah. Four weeks old. Six weeks old. Yeah. 
and different hotels, because apart from the University of Nairobi, I would supply elsewhere. Yeah. There are those who wanted the four-year-olds. Majority wanted the six-year-olds. I mean, the six weeks old. Old, yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. that's the way it was going. Uh, of course, I had employed somebody yeah. to look after the chickens. Like how, how many? How many people? There were two people looking after the wow. chickens. Yeah. And there was one mm. who was a driver who would go to supplying. Because when I'm engaged, oh, I bought yeah. a van. Ah, uh -uh, it was good business. Yes, I bought a van. And therefore... The people who would slaughter them, those yeah. ones would come when it's needed. Need, yeah. And there were many in that area because there were many other people keeping yeah. the chicken. So they would come, slaughter, and then the driver would uh, pick and go to supply. Mm. When I'm free, then I would do it myself. Okay. I would, uh, I had my car. I would just, if there are not so many, I would put them in my car boot. Yeah. If there is big volume, then I use the van. Yeah. Uh, sometimes. For even. how long did you do that business? Oh. I did, uh, for the tuition business, I did it for 13 years. For the chicken business, I did it for nine years. Wow. You, yes. Yeah. And uh, those businesses yeah. ended when I was transferred from Alliance High School to Kakamega <laughs> because by the then we had to move out of the schoolhouse. The house, yeah. Yes. But and there was no way of establishing shit somewhere else. It was not easy, yeah, although we had some property nearby at the Kikuyu town. Yeah, but, but uh, it, it was no, the space was small. Small, okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, all right. Uh, what is it that you are learning in life? Now you just mentioned your age, and I'm thinking this is big. What are you learning in life, and I'm learning and have learned in life that you think this is an important lesson? First, to answer your question that you had asked earlier. Yeah. The reason why I resigned. Oh, yeah. Forgot. <laughs> is yeah. when I was taken to Kakamega and my businesses collapsed, yeah. I was used <gasps> to doing business. Extra was, money. <laughs> extra money. <laughs> and I felt that I, I was far away from my family because I did not take oh, my yeah. family there. Yeah. I was unhappy. And indeed, when our TSE gave me the letter to go to Kakamega, I resisted. Mm. Indeed, I confronted the peers. Yes. Uh, and I told him I won't go. Yeah. Uh, but somehow, uh, God works in his own mysterious ways because mm. when I reflect on it, what I am today, is that was part of the journey. Ah, because it contributed. It, yes, it contributed because I had developed a kind of comfort zone mm. uh, in Alliance and I thought then I was okay with everything. But when they gave me that letter, when I resisted, uh, our chairman of the board then uh, organized a meeting for me to meet the director of education because the chairman of the board did not want me to resign because I wanted to resign. Oh, okay. And when I met uh, the director of education, she talked to me but still did not convince me. Yeah. Then <laughs> uh, later on, an appointment was made by her, the director of education. Yeah. She was a Mrs. Wangai that time. And uh, when I went to meet her, I found the PS. That was Professor Karega Mutahi then. Mm -mm. And uh, all the senior ministry officials. And I <laughs> thought, okay, here I am. I think these guys are going to sack me today. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> but instead, yeah. they flattered me. They started telling me how good a teacher I am, the work that I had done a wow. and that's the reason they are uh, promoting, promoting you me yeah. and all this. And indeed, by then, I was in job group M. I was moved to N immediately, on the spot. Wow. And I was told to move to Kakamega. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that is when I changed my mind. I was about to resign yeah. because I didn't want to go there. Yeah. But uh, when I accepted, uh, the, 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 my friend, Dr. Bonne <laughs> Ah. he was the MP, Ikonomani, yeah. where the school was. Yeah. He called me immediately. Wow. Organized for transport and I went to Kakamega. Okay. And I took over Musingu High School. Yes. I worked and I worked very hard. Yeah. But then another opportunity in an international school presented itself. Mm. And uh, since it was uh, this side, I decided now this is the opportunity now to quit. Yes. And go and finally establish my business near my family. Yeah. That's how I, I quit. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's how you transit from that to business now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. 
All right. Mm -hmm. Now to the other question. Mm -hmm. What you've been learning in life? <laughs> good things don't come easy. Talk to me. Yes. Good yes. things. You've got to work. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you that, uh, okay, there are situations whereby people succeed in quotes, maybe by getting a lot of money yeah. through shortcuts. It yeah. happens. Yeah. But that's not normal in life. <laughs> in life, the normal thing is for you to grow, work hard, work on whatever you achieve, yeah. and you achieve it. Okay. Yes. Because even that that comes easy might just live the same way. Oh, yes. Yeah. It's true. Many yeah. times whatever comes easy lives the same way because you don't have the experience of how to earn it yeah. or how to gain that success. Yeah. And therefore, it's very easy for you to lose it. Yes. And many people do that. They... they uh, it's just like starting from the top. You know, when you go uh, along the stairs and go up, yeah. uh, you feel the heat, you feel the energy you are using and you are going up. And when you reach there, you are like, oh, yes. Yeah. Ah, finally, I'm at the top. Yeah. But when you fly there, <laughs> you, don't, you don't even no. feel the, yeah. the heat or the energy that you use when you're mm. moving along the stairs. Yeah. So, and in the case, when God created us, yeah. He could have created us from nowhere and made us adults. Everything. But then we begin Small. from uh, as being children yeah. all along to what we become. Yeah. So that we were meant to experience every part of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it applies everywhere in business mm. and every other aspect of life. You've got to follow the stairs. Yeah. Sometimes God can bless you. Yeah. There are those extraordinary times yeah. when you you know, you, like they say in Kiswahili, yeah. you know, on yeah, there Sunday. are times you get a little extra. Positively, not by stealing or anything. Yeah. Too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it happens. And that's a God's favor and blessing. Yeah. Uh, but does it happen all the time? Time, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, um, why, why, why Laikipia? How do you end up in Laikipia? Well, I think it was more or less accidental, but mm. I would say this. Uh, I worked, uh, when I left Kakamega, mm. I worked in Nyeri for a while. Yeah. And I was a member of Nyeri Club. Yeah. I started playing golf when I was in Kakamega. Ah. So I came and joined Nyeri Club. And mm. then I remember when we would come and play golf in Nanyuki. And this period of June, July, August, when it's very cold, mm. would leave Nyeri when it's so cold. And then after, somewhere it, after Kiganjo, it begin to meet sunshine. Yeah. And I remember telling friends, I wish I would find a land here. I wish wow. one day I would live in Anyuki. Imagine that's what I was saying. Wow. And I didn't know. No, yeah. I didn't With know no that. plans, nothing. No plans whatsoever. Yeah. And then later on, an opportunity presents itself. Yeah. When I, uh, somebody told me that there's a property on sale in Anyuki. Yeah. Incidentally, a school. Ah, your area now. And do you know what? Yeah. This was the fourth attempt to start a private school. Yourself? When I was in Alliance High School, Talk to me. I tried to start a school in Gong. Yeah. It didn't work. <laughs> I tried to start a school in like, Kikuyu somewhere. It yeah. didn't work. I tried to, uh, to twice in two different places in Kikuyu. It didn't work. Yeah. And you know, I've told you that I yeah. used to have a holiday school. Mm. So eventually, when I was told there was a school on sale here, Yeah. It was now God had come. <laughs> and the opportunity finally <laughs> yes, was there. Yeah. Yes. And uh, finally wow. I negotiated. Yeah. It was not easy. Maybe, mm. uh, I don't know whether to say it at this point, it wasn't yeah. easy. No, talk about it. Now yeah. I'm thinking actually now you've yeah. failed thrice. What yeah. makes you believe <laughs> <laughs> on a fourth attempt? <laughs> I told you when I left university yeah. and I got my appointment letter, I told a friend one day I'll have my business. Yeah. So it was always in, in, my, oh yeah. in my mind. Mm. And there is this uh, saying that um, uh, what you think mm. you become. <sighs> What you feel, you attract. Uh -uh. What you imagine, you will create. Mm -hmm. And all along, I wanted a business. Mm. I wanted to be self-employed. Yeah. And it was always it's, in my mind. Yeah. And finally, it became. It became yeah. it's not, you see, when God created the world, we are told, he said, let there be. So his words became action. Yeah. It became what the world is today. Yes. And I think God has given us that potential. If you focus your mind on something, mm. imagine it, focus on, on it, it, 
it will finally present itself. And it, present it, it presents itself like an opportunity. Mm. Time and chance happens to everyone. Well. And the opportunity when it comes, if you don't uh, uh, notice it, it goes yeah, it and goes be. forever. Mm. And I am a believer in this. Matthew 7, 7 tells us this. Mm. Ask shall be given to you. Seek, you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. I always, I, was pray, I pray a lot. I'm, probably I don't look like a very prayerful <laughs> person. <laughs> but I'm but I yes. pray a lot. Yeah. And I have done it all my life. Yeah. Uh, I keep asking God for this and this. And you know, when we ask God for something, sometimes we get impatient because it looks true. like it's not yeah. happening. But the way I, I did the seeking mm -hmm. is when I pray to do something, mm -hmm. I don't wait for God to, make, uh, to start it for me. I start it. Oh, you pray, you start. Yeah, I pray, I start. <laughs> so that I think is, that's the greater you're an entrepreneur, yes, true. <laughs> yes. I always make the first step. Yes. And oh, so we don't have the time for me to tell the whole story where I failed. Yeah. But I have, there are many attempts I have failed. Like I've told you to try to start schools. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, I would continue, I'm, I'm very persistent on something. Yeah. That is one attribute I have. Ah. When I focus on something, I don't stop. I can be nagging. <laughs> and I will continue. I like so, that, yeah. what happened is, yeah. a friend of mine told me that there was property on sale in Anyuki. Mm. Uh, that time I was somewhere, uh, that time incidentally I was jobless. I had resigned from the other job. Ah. I quit that other job. Yeah. I went to US. Okay, what happened is that I quit without knowing where I'm going the international school, I quit and I said, okay. You got tired? I was tired ah. and it was not working the way I thought. Okay. So I quit. The interesting thing, that time when I resigned, I took my family to Malindi for a holiday. Ah, you know how to resign. <laughs> and then, you see, when I was there, I was like, by the way, I'm jobless. <laughs> And then I started asking myself, okay, what have I done? Ah, I'm and jobless. now we're on holiday. <laughs> yes, and I'm jobless. So what am I going to do? My mind was racing. Yeah. And I said, okay, fine. What I will do is that I will not be employed again. Ah. Whatever the job or business I'm going to do, do yeah. I will do it, but I will not be employed again. Yeah. And I continued praying. And I, I listen. there's one of the preachers I listened to, Joel Austin. Mm. He's a very positive-minded person. And yeah. I listen and listen and listen to a lot of his preachings. Yeah. And I said, okay, fine. Then I was invited by my niece to Boston, U.S., and I mm. left. Mm -hmm. When I was there and I, I inquired a little what the kind of thing I would do when I'm there, I didn't like yeah. the kind of jobs. Any job I would have gotten there was not what I'm trained for and what I would want to do. When you're now in the U.S.? Yes. Yeah. So I came back. Uh -uh. <laughs> when I came back, yeah. a friend of mine called me and told me there is a school on sale in Nanyuki. Wow. I was told in the evening. Yeah. And the following day, I was here. <laughs> <laughs> it was what you wanted. Yeah. yeah. The, he told me, uh, he's a very good friend of mine. He's actually the owner of the Brookfield School in Karatina, mm. my former principal at Alliance High School. Wow. Uh -huh. uh, so I came. Yeah. I was taken around. You know, I pretended to be, the school was under lease. Yeah. That property, yeah. uh, many people don't know the history of St. Christopher yeah. School. St. Christopher School was built in 1936. Yeah. It was called Beehive School. It belonged to Colonel Delafos and mm. his wife. Colonel Delaforce was the magistrate in Anyuki and his wife was running the school. Okay. Then in 1973, he decided to sell the property. It was 60 acres of land, the whole of this cottage estate, plus the school. Yeah. So his own cook gathered men, his wow. friends, yeah. from his own area in Nyeri. Mm -hmm. They formed a company. They came from Tetu and Mhoyas. Yeah. So they formed a company called Temu. Tetu Mhoya. Yes. They raised the money that was required in 1973, yeah. paid the Muzungu and acquired the, the land. land. So they shared out the rest of the land and um, 
left the school with 4.1 acres. <sighs> they leased the school to another Muzungu, mm -hmm. Anne Woodward. Yeah. She had come from St. Christopher School yeah. in Karen. Ah. So when she came here, she changed the, the name, name from St. Christopher, uh, from Beehive School to St. Christopher. Okay. That's how it acquired the uh, name. All right. Yeah, right. so she ran the school until around 1981. She passed on. And then uh, Mrs. Kurutu and her family leased yeah. the school all the way to 2009 when it was advertised for sale. Ah. So when I came around and I was shown the school, mm. it was not impressive at all because it was those wooden structures of 1936. That's the way it looked. Yeah. However, I had a burning desire. Oh, yeah. And the interesting thing about <laughs> it is <laughs> I decided I'm going to buy. But you know what? I had no money, no <laughs> savings. I think my account had about 600,000 in savings. That's it. But I had some assets. Yeah, oh, yeah. uh, when I was in uh, my, uh, the rest of my mm. life there, I had bought some plots here and some property. So I went, uh, to, I went back to my friend and yeah. we went to the sellers and we told them, you know yeah. what, we would like to buy. So we started negotiations. The first negotiation, yeah. the first day, we could not agree. They started from very high and started low. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, somebody had told me there were other people who were interested yeah. from this region and elsewhere. Yeah. So we disagreed. They, uh, they were old men. They told me, you go and think about it, we will call you. Mm. And actually went feeling a little depressed. Yeah. After about five days, they called me. They told me, you know what, uh, yeah. can you tell us what you are telling us the other day? <laughs> <laughs> Start afresh. Yeah, have you decided to meet our price? Yeah. By that time, I adjusted a little upwards. Mm. They also came down a little. Yeah. Uh, then uh, we could not agree again. Uh -uh. Yes, and I went away. But this time, mm. I, not, I, I felt that actually this, I, I'm going to get this property. Yeah. So I prodded them. Yeah. I kept on calling. Oh, no, oh, no, you started yeah. pursuing. Yeah, after another few days, we met again. Yeah. That, that attempt, we finally reached an agreement mm. on a figure. And let me tell you, yeah. we were near somewhere. Mm. Mm, uh, and so there was a lawyer friend of mine at Mudoga Gaturu and Advocates. The offices were next to Barclays Bank mm. in Nyeri. So the moment these wazes agreed, uh, we agreed on the price, price yeah, you could. I told them, you know what, I have price. a lawyer just near here. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go and make the agreement? <laughs> and I was literally running. Uh, I think uh, I was almost five meters ahead of them as we walked to the lawyer. The <laughs> you had to get this one. I had to get it. Now that we have agreed. Yeah. And when I'm doing all these things, I really did not God. know. And I want you to see something, mm. Cecilia, here. Yeah that uh, I have seen God's hand in almost everything that I've done. And I believe God gave me his favor. True, true. Because mm. we went to the lawyer. The mm. lawyer told us, it was around one o'clock. Mm. He told us to go back at four. He will have prepared the documents. Yeah. So we went away, then gathered again, in, uh, again at uh, four. And then uh, Oh, the agreement had been drafted. So we signed. Hmm. And each party got their copy. Go, yeah. You know what? What? From there, I drove like crazy to Nairobi. To the new... Oh, okay. To Nairobi. Yes. Do you know where I was going? No. I have... My, one of my sisters is married in Kikuyu. Yeah. And near her place, I had bought a plot. <laughs> and what I was after, <laughs> I was told, these guys had told me... <laughs> In five days, <laughs> yes, you pay us ten percent of the selling price. Uh, uh, in five days. In five days, and then in six months you pay the balance, and the deal will be over. What came into my mind is, yeah. I must sell one of my plots in five days. <laughs> Have you ever oh. heard that? <laughs> no. Imagine. No wonder I, you left immediately. Yes, I went. My brother-in-law. Uh, we, 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 we are very good friends. I told him, you know what, I have this deal. Mm. I have no money. Mm. It's worth millions, yeah. but I have no money and I need to pay 10% of this mm. money. 
Then I told him, can we sell this plot? Yeah. <laughs> he just called a broker, a friend of his, and said, can you start looking for somebody to, uh, to buy this? Uh, Meanwhile, I was looking for people, but for people to give you uh, money in millions, of I course. <laughs> but I was trying friends yeah. who could probably agree. Uh, before I sell the plot, they give me that money, I pay these guys. Did you ever think about partnership at this moment? No, I never thought about it. I never. <laughs> so, <laughs> first of all, when the broker, let me tell you, I want you to see where yeah. God comes in. Yeah. Uh, when the broker was told to sell, he went immediately he started uh, looking for people. Mm -hmm. And me, I went away. The following day, I was called. And we met at my brother-in-law's place. The broker came and said, there is a muse here who is interested. The following ah, day. Ah. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> that plot, do you know what? I had bought that plot in 1991 at 270000 Yeah. I was selling it at 2.5 million <sighs> mm -mm. back in 2009. And the muse said, you see, he saw the plot, liked it, and he told me yeah. he would like to buy it for his daughter who was in America. Yeah. And then I told him why I needed the money. Now listen, the muse tells me, you know what? Mm. I have listened to your story. Yeah. And I can see what you are after. Yeah. Uh, I'll give you, we agreed from 2.5 million to 2.3. Yeah. I'm going to give you 2 million. I'll put it in your account. What? The rest of the deal we can do when we are going to land the board. What? I had my money. Uh-uh. <laughs> By the fourth day, I was with the Wazes. Uh-uh. <laughs> I told them, you know what? Yeah. I can pay you the 10%. <laughs> <laughs> To this day, yeah. those guys do not believe that I sold property to pay them. They and thought that money was in my account. Yeah, within a short yes. four days, literally. Uyo siyo mungu. Uyo ni mungu. Uyo ni mungu. That's God's Uyo. favor. Yeah. So I paid them what they needed. Mm -hmm. And then they told me, now take over the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, you pay us 50,000 shillings per month. Mm -hmm for six months, mm. after which you can, uh, uh, mm. now we can go to the land board and you take over the property. This, yeah. <laughs> now that was uh, around, that was uh, September 2009. Mm. And now the person who was leasing the school had 16 candidates. Mm. So they had to do KCP and then he, she leaves the school to me. Yeah. But then I had to, to negotiate with her uh, so that I can inherit uh, some desks which were hers. The rest of the property wasn't hers. But oh, there were okay. some desks and yeah. some kitchen items or whatever. So that we negotiated the, separately. The, yeah. So that December, I remember that December uh, 2009, I started marketing myself. And I want you to see another something else that shows you yeah, God's God hand in it. Yeah. When I went, uh, a friend of mine uh, took me to see uh, the priest in charge of the PCA church because I wanted to go to churches, tell them that I'm the new owner of St. Christopher School and they should give me children because there were very few. Yeah. Uh, so when the pastor uh, went and introduced me to, he called the priest, yeah. a Reverend Moravi. And uh, he said he was in a matatu coming from Nairobi. Mm. So we waited for him at the matatu terminus. Yeah. And so when he came out, he got into my car at the back seat, because we were seated in the car. And then when he got in and said, oh, you mean this is Bernard? Wow. Oh, it was a guy who knew me. Yeah. And you know what? When I was in Standard 7 in uh, Nyeri, Kireti, yeah. he was in Standard 4, and I was, uh -uh. Their, I was their head prefect. <laughs> So he could recognize <laughs> he, me. Yeah. Reverend Muraidi facilitated me in a fantastic manner because I would go to PCA church, the English service, yeah. the Kikuyu service and Kiswahili service. Okay. And I would be facilitated to stand in front there and tell the people who I am yeah. and what I'm doing. Wow. And I went to other churches. So eventually by January 2010, mm. I had a significant number of children. Children. To start with, yes. Mm. 
Oh, to start? To start, it was, uh, the, was uh, what I was inheriting was less than 100 kids. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I got uh, over 200 by January. Ah, yes. that's a lot. And from then on, I decided, um, uh, okay, I started, and then remember, by June 2010, I had to pay the balance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then tw June 2010 comes and I don't have money. Okay. I had gone to every bank, including even circles and every. Nobody wanted to finance me. And I had a very good business proposal that Why? I had written. When they looked at that uh, school, the way it was looking, wooden oh, yeah. and uh, dilapidated and almost yeah. rotten, mm. nobody. They, nobody wanted to finance me. They all went away. In fact, they would come. Yeah. They ask me for valuations, they ask me for all documents, I give them, but then they don't come back. Then I follow oh. them, and then they say... Silence. They refused. Here I am, I committed Gosh. myself, but I have no money. But I thank God because I have a very powerful spirit. Yeah. When I focus on something, Some I don't give up. <laughs> it will either break me or I break it. <laughs> <laughs> so June comes, and then I called the, the owners. Yeah. Was there, Inyeri, yeah. and I called them for lunch. <laughs> Gave them lunch, then I told them, <laughs> I, have no money. I don't have your money. But I'm pleading with you. Yeah. I'm pleading, mm. give me up to December 2010. Yeah. And I, I know I'll have gotten the money. <laughs> and then now you see a God's hand again. Yeah. One of the Wazes stood up and said, we have heard of your fame in Nanyuki. You have started that school so well. Yeah. You are doing a very good job. And wow. because you look like our child, wow. we give you one more year. A year. Where do you ever hear such things? I years? have never heard. <laughs> Instead of giving me up to December 2010, they gave June. me up to June 2011. Yes. So. I continued looking for money. I tell you, it was difficult. I could not get. Then I yeah. remembered a certain lady whose children I, I taught. Yeah. And they were good family uh, friends. So I went to her and told her all my problems. Then she told me, you come here. She's a business lady in Nairobi. Yeah. She took me to the finance director of Development Bank of Kenya. Ah. Uh, when I went there, I was asked for the normal documents and whatever. Then, in two weeks, I was called back. I had been given three quarters of the money. Uh -uh. Off a letter. Now the question is, okay, yeah. I have this money. Where do I get the balance? Hmm. Then I walked, I went to a friend of mine, a very wealthy guy in uh, Nyeri. Yeah. His children went through Alliance High School, so we knew each other. Yeah. And what I told him is interesting because I went and told <laughs> him, you know what? I don't want to mention his name, but uh, yeah. I told him, you know what? I yeah. know you are a rich man and you are a millionaire. <laughs> Th those are the words I used. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have this money. Yes. Can you give me this balance? Yes. We do an agreement. And for sure, because you know me, you know I'll pay you. Yeah. The man was just laughing. Then he took uh, f uh, his phone and called the manager Equity Bank, yeah. Nyeri 2, and told, called him to his office. Uh -uh. When the manager came, he told him, this young man, I know him. Yeah. I want you to go with him, listen to his story, and help him. Just that. So I drove with the manager to the office. I gave, uh, as usual, he asked for the yeah, yeah. documents. Then my documents go to Equity Headquarters. And then after a few days, I get a call from a huh. stranger. Yeah. He tells me, that Bernard Madhu, yes. Uh, this is so-and-so. When you're in Form 6, I was your Form 1. Uh -uh. And I'm now the final signatory. Equity. Equity. <laughs> I can see you are asking <laughs> us to finance you on this. I said, yes. He asked me a few questions. And Do you know what? Uh, I was given all the money. I don't want to mention amounts. No, yeah. I was given all the money, yeah. less 700,000. Uh -uh. Yes. That's good. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. 
And then now the balance of 700,000, I had uh, by then sold another property that I had somewhere in Githurai. Yeah. So I, at least I had the money to top up. Did, yeah. So here, the, my, 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 uh, I mean, uh, uh, the, the offer letter I got from the other bank, yeah. I now went back and cancelled it. And now the equity financed everything. Everything, yeah. When I got my money, I paid uh, those guys. We went to the land board. The day mm. I got the title deed yeah. on, with my name, mm. I think that's one of my greatest days. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. Tell me why. In between, there yeah. were some people who had gone behind my back and telling uh, uh. those guys yeah. to throw me out. They, and can, they, they can pay more. Uh, uh. But those guys had said no. This no. guy has not yet been defeated. Yeah. So the moment <laughs> the title deed was on so my even name. when they are adding you a year, people are already pursuing them. Oh, too. yes. Yeah. That is good. Well, yeah. So. And one of them had actually walked in like a parent and I showed him around. Kumbe is a guy who wants to, <laughs> <laughs> to uh -uh. go behind yeah, my back. Yeah. So uh, I got my title deed and yeah. there I was. Now the big one, the other big question is this. Mm. The school was still looking dilapidated, old structures, what? And I was advertising. I would go to some of my friends and they tell me, okay, we know you, you are a performer, we know your CV is good, but I will not give you children with these kind of structures. <laughs> yeah, they were telling me on the face. The truth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now, where do I get money? First of all, uh -uh. I've just been given money to yeah. buy. So there is loan to pay. pay. Yeah. And my cash flow was still very weak. Yeah. So where do I get money to, to start construction? Wow. And just before he says that, comes the end of our part one. We'll be right back. Bye-bye from us.